well, it doesn't feel very good. There are dozens of tests approved by the FDA that can check for an active coronavirus infection by taking a sample from the back of your nose or throat. All of these tests require one key element, this, the swab. And for months now, the U.S. hasn't had enough of them. It's one reason there are still complaints about testing shortages nationwide. But first, it's important to understand that a coronavirus test is not one single kit or device. There are several different steps and pieces of equipment, all sourced from different places. The first step, the swabbing, usually happens in a hospital or community health center or drive through testing site. The other steps where the samples get analyzed usually happen in a lab. And if one element is missing from that chain, that can prevent testing from happening entirely. And that's what's been happening across the country. Over the last few months, supply shortages have slowed this process way down, starting with the most universal thing required for this type of test, the swab. Collecting a nasopharyngeal swab. So let's focus on the swabs. It is essential to use correct technique when collecting and These aren't like the ones you probably have at home. The ones used for coronavirus testing are called nasal pharyngeal swabs, and they're considered medical devices. They have to be long enough and flexible enough to get all the way through your nose to the back of your throat. And the material on the end can't be cotton because cotton contains its own genetic material, which could interfere with the genetic testing for the virus. Back in February, health experts and governors started warning of a swab shortage. The problem is swabs. You know, I've spent half of my day today trying to get a straight answer from the CDC and the federal government and FEMA. When can we expect swabs? The U.S. government does have an emergency stockpile of medical supplies, but that stockpile doesn't include swabs. Plus, before the pandemic, there were only two major manufacturers of these swabs in the whole world. One was Puritan Medical Products in Maine, and the other was Copan Diagnostics in Italy. Since mid-March, the U.S. government has gotten millions of swabs from the Italian company, but that still didn't meet demand. A federal contract to up production from the American company didn't come till more than a month later. This is what it's about, right? On April 19th, President Trump said he would use the Defense Production Act to make more swabs. That's a Cold War era law that gives the president emergency control over domestic industries. On April 29th, the government said it had given a $75 million contract to Puritan to make more swabs. There's no clear consensus on how much coronavirus testing we should actually be doing and how many swabs that would take. But there is a shortage and it's being addressed on multiple fronts. The largest maker of household cotton swabs, U.S. Cotton in Ohio, is converting a plant to make a synthetic variety. The FDA has approved more types of swabs and some are being produced on 3D printers. And new types of tests are being invented. The FDA recently approved a saliva test that doesn't require a swab. But right now, the swab test is still the most common way to identify an active infection. So swab shortages and shortages of other supplies like the chemicals needed in the next few stages of testing can slow down the whole process. Widespread testing is key to reopening the country in a safe way. But to get to that point, we're gonna need more swabs.